Three, two, one. What is going on, Southwest? What is going on? It is podcast day, and you are tuned in to the Southwest ISD number one numero uno premier podcast for all Southwest ISD athletics. This is Scoreboard. I am your man, Brandon Medina. I am running the ship alone because our boy, Mr. Peter Wagner, your athletic director, has the always exciting, the always interesting jury duty. So we're going to run this thing a little alone, but it's going to be fun, man. We have a lot to talk about. We have baseball and softball games coming up. And welcome to the playoffs. We are talking Southwest Dragon and Legacy Titans soccer playoffs. That all kicks off today while we're recording, which is March 23rd on Thursday. So let's get a little bit uh, crazy here. Talk a little bit about some more stats, highlight some players, all that good stuff. Please make sure you are sharing the podcast. You can find this podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Google Play, all great stuff wherever you can find podcasts, as well as our YouTube page on SWISD TV. So let's break the news a little bit. Let's get into some legacy talk for softball and baseball. Southwest Legacy right now still trying to figure things out. However, they do play Southwest High School, so a little fire and armor matchup there in softball. Coming up on Friday the 24th, as well as they have uh, McCullum. And that's going to be at McCullum next Tuesday on the 28th right now. So still struggling in softball, but they are really, really close when it comes to their games. Um, I do expect this team to kind of get things right, get things started, get things going. Uh, McCullum last time around uh, did go pretty tough on them. So hopefully they can figure that out when they play McCullum. This will be the first time they play the Dragons, though, this year uh, when it comes to that Friday game. So we want to wish the best of luck to our Southwest uh, Legacy Titans varsity softball team. When it comes to baseball, baseball is also completely getting going right now. Each team has played about 17 games so far on Southwest and Legacy. Right now, Legacy is still, again, trying to figure it out. They do have Medina Valley on Friday the 24th, and they play win on Tuesday the 28th. Um, so as it stands right now, uh, Legacy is still looking to get their first win in the district. Um, They've only played four games, though, so nothing too crazy, Uh, but they have played really, really close. A lot of, you know, two zeros, um, four twos, a lot of really close games uh, that if they can turn the stride around, it'd be a great time to do so. They have Medina Valley on the 24th, win the 28th, and then next Friday, you'll see the Fire and Armor baseball game with Legacy and Southwest. Uh, When it comes to Southwest, obviously baseball and softball, um, have been staples for this community for a long time, and that continues this year. So Southwest Baseball, 12-4 and four overall, 3-1 and one in districts in that second place right now. They will be playing South Sand High School here um, on Friday the 24th at the Complex at the uh, Softball Stadium, I mean Softball Baseball Stadium, and then they will also be playing uh, Harlandale at Harlandale on the 28th. Right now they are led by senior Jathan Russell, who has a pretty solid average, man, 452 average. Uh, he also leads the team in stolen bases. Um, so this team looks to be uh, pretty, pretty solid going through. Again, 3-1 and one in district right now. They do have a pretty solid schedule coming up, though. Like I said, South Sand coming up on Friday the 24th, Harlandale. And then you got the Southwest Legacy versus the Southwest Dragon Fine Armor baseball game on Friday the 31st, the last day of March. Crazy how fast This entire spring uh, semester is just flying by. Uh, But baseball is finally on full swing. And baseball will be coming back for the majors as well, for all you MLB fans, very soon. Um, But that's going to be for Southwest Baseball. For Southwest uh, High School, the Dragon Softball Squad, also very much known to be a really good squad. They are 13-12-1 overall, but 5-1 in district. And they're going to face Legacy On Friday the 24th, like we said, that's that Fire and Armor softball game. They got a win on the 38th. Right now, they are led by Paris Alakines, who, check this out, guys, an average of 439 leads the team in batting average and a freshman. Big deal there. So great job for the freshman. You also are led with home runs by Casey Coons, who we did an interview with in the student spotlight for Beyond the Arches on our SWISD TV YouTube page. Uh, I've known Casey for quite a while myself, family friends with the uh, with Jaden Johnson, her brother, and of course, her lovely mother, Miss Lillian. So 
with that uh, two home runs leading the team there. And then you also got stolen bases leading the team uh, by Angela Morales. She has 12 stolen bases. So this is a speedy team, lots of power, lots of pop off the bat. We're looking forward to celebrate them and celebrate hopefully another good run deep in the playoffs when it comes to softball and baseball. So this show will not be as long as most. Um, we do have only a few games kind of on the calendar as far as setting the, setting the standard and setting the tone. But we do want to make sure we highlight our uh, playoff squads for the soccer season. So it's coming up right now. The three games we're going to talk about is it's going to be Edison Golden Bears versus the Southwest High School Girls Softball Squad. And that's going to be tonight. All these games are tonight, actually, for, so for uh, soccer. Um, so the Edison Golden Bears versus the Southwest High School Girls Soccer Squad tonight. Southwest Legacy Girls versus Alamo Heights also tonight. And then you got the Dragon Boys versus Jefferson um, also tonight as well. So a lot of big games happening here on March 23rd. Um, a lot to get into, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's start with Southwest Legacy. You have the Southwest Legacy Girls Squad, who is 7, 8, and 8, going against a really, really good Alamo Heights squad, who's 19 and 0 and 3. So three losses and 19 wins. Um, the Titans do have... 37 goals for and 37 against. So what that means is very evenly matched. They're going to score their goals. They also get scored on quite a bit. And when it comes to scoring, Alamo Heights knows that very, very well. Alamo Heights, check this out, people. 145 goals for, only been scored on four times, four goals against. Alamo Heights has um, historically been pretty solid in soccer, and I think this girl squad is really, really special. However, Southwest Legacy has some really good talent and some premier leadership as well. They have Carissa Kirksey, who leads the team in goals, while Lisette Acosta Astorga, say that three times fast, awesome name, uh, leads the team in assists. This Legacy girl squad is definitely something to, to look forward to and look at. Lots of premier talent, lots of young talent, um, but this is going to be a big test. You know, when you look at the standings of things and you look at the state standings, I mean, Alamo Heights, they're up there. They're really, really solid. Um, so I do think this is going to be uh, something for the uh, the legacy girls to hopefully get a big win, big confidence boost. You have Ariana Santos, who's there, uh, the junior, who has saved about 4.8 shots on goal. Um, she's really, really solid. So I really think the legacy girls have a good chance. If you catch them slipping, you don't want to, you know, hopefully Alamo Heights maybe is overlooking the talent and we can go ahead and, uh, you know, separate in that matchup. But Alamo Heights, again, really, really good team. When it comes to Southwest High School, both girls and boys in the playoffs, big, big time right now. Let's start with the girls. You have Edison Golden Bears going against the Southwest High School girls soccer squad. Um, this soccer squad is a absolute dominant soccer squad for both boys and girls. Um, we'll start again, like I said, though, with the, uh, the girl squad, they're going against Edison. Edison has not looked very good this year. Um, I don't think this is going to be a really close matchup at all. Southwest is 12, 0 and two. They're on a three game winning streak. And when we talk about goals for and against Southwest, 79 goals for 16 goals against, now, that's a huge stat, but also when you take into the count, they are averaging upwards of four goals a game. Southwest High School, this girl squad is going to be dangerous. And so they are led by Maya Montaigne with 23 goals and Sierra Flores with 10 assists. So they score goals well, pass the ball well. Um, it's going to be a really, really big game for the Southwest High School girl squad. Um, as they take on Edison. I know Edison has struggled throughout a lot of their games, a lot of losses, a lot of ties, um, whereas Southwest has really, really been dominant. They're 12-0-2 in district, leading the district. They're number one. Um, however, they are also overall, even in outside matchups and tournaments, 18-2-2. So really tough to uh, not choose the Southwest High School girls, even though, you know, I'm super unbiased, right? But uh, I do think this is going to be a win, and we should see the Southwest High School girls continue their playoff uh, experience and continue their playoff run as they move forward. Finally, we have the Dragon Boys. This is the big one. I know we have a lot of people that are going to be attending this game. I might be there as well tonight. I would really love to see this game. Um, so Southwest Dragon Boys, 21-1 overall. 14 and 0 in district. There have been 16 winning weeks. They are on a 16 game winning streak. 
And this is just outrageous, guys. 103 points for only 15 goals scored against him. So these kids are scoring, you know, goals galore. And you've uh, you've seen that when we talk about some of the uh, the scheduled matchups. I mean, you look at the schedule first out the gate. They start out seven and zero, five and two, four and two. I mean, these scores are crazy. It's definitely a FIFA s score when you're talking about the video game. I mean, six and zero, the nine one uh, victory against McCullum is one that stands out, of course. But then you have. Once against Harlandale, who was number two in district, they beat them 7-0. So the second best team in district, they're still beating 7-0. They also beat McCullum 10-2, South San 8-0, South Side 7-0. This is a dangerous squad. How dangerous, you ask? Well, listen, we're talking about a top squad in the city. Number one, number two squad in the city, right? A, a top 10 squad in the region. Um, in San Antonio, they are ranked number two in Texas, all of Texas, this great state. They are ranked number 34 and number seven in Division 5A. So we're talking about a very, very experienced, very uh, calculated squad when it comes to Southwest High School. They're going against Jefferson. Jefferson has not been bad. They also have not been great, right? Six and four in district, middle of the pack. Uh, they are seven and eight overall, so they did not play a lot of games the way Southwest did um, as far as overall, but they are coming off a big win against Sam Houston. They lost 3 2 to Brackenridge, and they've won against Brackenridge. So they split that, that matchup. Why that's important, that was Southwest High School's first game, and they beat Brackenridge 7 0. So when it comes to the Southwest Dragons, again, 16 game winning streak, 103 goals for, and only 15 against. Jefferson, on the flip side, have only 30 goals for and 28 against. So a similar story we talked about with the Southwest Legacy Titans girls squad. They they get their points up there, but they also give up a lot. So they give up just about as much as they as they uh, as they get. Southwest averages three goals, not in the game, people, in the first half. From what we've seen, Southwest is averaging three goals in the first half and upwards of about five goals a game. If you know soccer, that is crazy high i mean you're a, a normal soccer score 2-1 1-0 2-0 all that good stuff even 2-2 if you're going for a tie or 1-1 five goals in a game is very impressive and it uh completely makes sense because they are led by goal scorer and senior edson gonzalez who i believe had 30 something goals his junior year now he's a senior has 27 goals again very consistent. This kid has a very bright future ahead of him. I really want to see him go and accomplish great things. I think he's a, a, a premier goal scorer in the city and somebody that a lot of uh, youth camps and maybe some some professional teams could take advantage of when it comes to uh, bringing into their squad and helping make that squad better. Um, also, Hector Quistano has 17 assists for this team. This is a all-around great squad. I've talked with Chief Balomo, our police chief, who follows the squad very heavily. And even he said when he goes to some of these games, the tactic of the opposing team is literally just play defense for 90 minutes. And these these kids are still scoring seven goals, five goals, six goals. I mean, it is a, a testament to coaching, how good their coaching has been, a testament to how close this team is as a whole and united. And it's also a testament to how dangerous this squad's going to be when it comes to the, the playoffs for uh, for soccer uh, against common opponent opponents. Jefferson and Southwest have played a few common opponents. Jefferson has a one and three record against the same opponents that Southwest have had. Southwest, on the flip side, a five and zero record, an absolute clean sheet against common opponents with Jefferson High School. So this is going to be one of those games where, if we're looking at it, I really, really want to say that the final of this game, if I had to guess. Is going to be four to two, uh, Southwest. I think Jefferson can come out the gate, score a little bit, maybe might get hot or might feel a little bit more confident, something to prove. Southwest is at home. That's very important to note. Um, but like I said, you're talking about the a number two seed uh, team in the entire city, not just our district, an entire city, and a top ten team in the entire region. Um, so it's going to be a really, really fun game. Do not miss it. All three of those playoff matchups will be happening today on the 23rd. 
Um, make sure you go get your tickets. Make sure you go support your athletics here at Southwest ISD. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode. It was a quick one, but we want to focus in on the playoffs and we want to focus in on what's coming up for baseball and softball. Hopefully next week we're talking about all three of these teams again moving on in the soccer playoffs. We want to wish the best of luck to all of those. We want to also let you guys know that there is going to be a lot of really fun stuff happening this weekend as a whole at the district. So we do have coffee with our incredible new superintendent dr ball that's all going to be kicking off in the morning at mccullough middle school as well as a job fair for all those looking to possibly get a career here with southwest isd or those that may be looking um that's going to be happening on saturday as well from nine to noon at mccullough middle school as well like that coffee um and then we will have a car show for the first time for the district a big car show happening at meadow creek elementary all those events right there by old pierce our road not super far right off the highway um, but the car show is going to be going from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So feel free to stop by, grab some food, lots of cool vendors, lots of cool little things going on over there. And uh, obviously some really nice cars, too. So it's an open car show. If you're interested in joining, please go check out our social media pages. We've been pushing it pretty heavily. If you uh, want to join, you still have time and you can also pay um, when you get there, too. So you don't have to do anything as far as pre-registration. You can just kind of show up, pay and put your car on the show. It is open so you could have a new car, an old car, whatever the case. But that's what's going on here at Southwest ISD. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you. I had to go out it alone today. Hopefully my voice does not annoy you too much. Uh, but we want to, again, wish the best of luck to all of our incredible student athletes. And, of course, our soccer teams as they go into the playoffs, as well as our baseball and softball squads uh, at both of our respective high schools. This has been Scoreboard. My name is Brandon Medina. And until next time, like always, we are Southwest. Two, one.